one thing that I know for sure is even though every time I listen to a successful story, you know, somebody who made it big and they're, they're just rocking it, I feel like a failure, but then I really realize, well, I can't be a failure yet because I haven't quit. Welcome to Biz Story Shared, where storytellers share their inspiration, motivation, some disappointments, and how they applied the lessons that led them to success. Stories are gifts. Listen as these gifts are shared. Now, here is your host, Charlotte Plott. Hello, storytellers. This is Charlotte Plott, and I'm thrilled to bring you our guest today, Steve Stewart. Steve, are you ready to be a storyteller? I am. Oh, Let's I'm... make something up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the best offer I've heard on here. I like that. Well, Steve, I'm going to tell the listeners a little bit about you, that you're a financial wellness coach. Mm -hmm. You call yourself America's personal finance architect, mm -hmm. a rich habits apostle. And you say, pay attention, not interest. That is really profound guidance to people. That encompasses everything I believe in right there. That is powerful. And Steve is also a very popular podcast host of No Debt, No Credit, and No Problems. And I copied from Steve's Twitter this. Steve Lation, I promise the day you cut up your credit cards and commit to paying off all debt is the day you change your children's future. Mm-hmm. Well, Steve, I've given our listeners just a little summary about you. So will you just take a minute and tell us more about you personally? Because we want to get to know you better and then give us an overview of your business. Sure. Let's uh, let's start with the story where I was born back. At, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the financial coaching came in about, uh, it's about almost 10 years ago now when my wife and I, we decided we were going to get out of debt. I'd stopped using credit cards. I'd learned from Dave Ramsey that you didn't need them to live. We decided to go ahead and stop borrowing money for cars and stuff like that, and we paid off all our debt. We got consumer debt-free in 2007, and at the same time is when I was like, okay, I know what to do. I know there's other people who need this help. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to help people as well, and I was teaching them one-on-one. -on -one. I was leading classes at my church and things like that. Then in uh, 2010, I had the itching, the desire to do something different than, than what most other coaches would be doing, and that's to have some kind of an outreach, some kind of a, a business card online where people could get a hold of me. But then they also had a way to get to know me, and that was in releasing my first podcast, which was called Money Plan SOS. I've since retired that show, but had a lot of great success. And that was really where the business part comes in. It was more like a, like I said, like a calling card, mm -hmm. kind of a, uh, a way somebody could get to know me, and that was kind of the advertising piece of my business. Because what I, one thing I don't like, uh, especially in the personal or not the personal finance space, but the finance space in general, is you know we're always trying to be sold something, All right? Right. And usually that thing that we're trying to be sold is either a debt or b a product that we don't need. And I don't want to be that guy. I want to be that guy who people know, like, and trust me enough to say, okay. Steve's not going to steer me wrong. He's going to give it to me straight. He's going to tell me what I need to know. And, and that's going to help them to make better decisions in how to create their financial future. And as you said earlier, I'm a personal finance architect. That's just my way of saying I help people build a house of financial freedom. I help them design that house to where they have their structure, their four walls. And that helps them to protect their family in the four walls with the shelter, and then they can start to throw in some extra things, which is fun and, and comfort and things like that. So uh, I think I've completely went off the rails here with what you asked me. <laughs> well, I think that is so powerful that you are helping people because I've heard a lot of people that have taken the Ram Dave Ramsey course, and, mm -hmm. and I know it's very successful. It takes a lot of discipline to get started, though, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but I think anything you do to become successful takes some form of discipline, does it not? That's true. It does. <laughs> yes. Nobody was born successful. We all had to get there. Now, we may have had some help. We may have had parents that were a little more well-to-do. Uh, but then I hear the stories of the people who didn't have any kind of conveniences in their life. They started out poor and 
and they've made it through the tough trials in life. So, Mm -hmm. you know, one thing that I know for sure is even though every time I listen to a successful story, you know, somebody who made it big and they're, they're just rocking it, I feel like a failure, but then I realize, well, I can't be a failure yet because I haven't quit. I just really admired that part of your information when I was looking at it. And I did put down another quote from you that says, your fear is 100% dependent on you for its survival. And and I bet it's fear that keeps us afraid that we're going to fail, mm-hmm. whether we're trying to save money or get out of debt. Yeah. And getting out of debt is normalized in America. And that's one thing is keeping people from being successful. And you can have all the the really high level discussions on well, borrowing money at low interest and investing at high and all that stuff. You know, it's just too complicated. I want to talk to the everyday American and help them to get through these challenges of car advertisements. And, and you can't go through a commercial break on TV without seeing, uh, you know, somebody pitching a credit card or, or, you know, Hey, you know, check out your credit score and monitor your, your credit score is irrelevant right now. We need to get out of debt and start saving money so we can change our family tree. Yes. And I like that when you say change our family tree, that would be pretty awesome if that was the legacy that we left our kids and grandkids. Mm -hmm. Great. I like that information. And I want to read this too, because you had this also on Twitter. Listening to the stories of successful people makes me feel like I've failed, but I haven't failed because I haven't quit yet. And I think that that is so powerful because we... We do just need to get up and keep trying again, don't we? Yeah, that, that's exactly what I just said a couple minutes ago, too. I, I, wow, you pulled that right off of my Twitter. I guess I guess I said that on Twitter, didn't I? <laughs> you did. It was yeah. powerful. Because there, you know, there's those times when we're just thinking we're not doing it right. We can't make it. It's, it's hopeless. But then when you think, well, what's the alternative? Well, I haven't quit yet, so I can still do it. And, and hope is really powerful when you think about that. Yes, it really is powerful. So, Steve, would you tell us a little bit about how you started your courses? I see that you have one that's called Steve's Signature Budget Course, the Financial Mm -hmm. Strategy Coaching Session, and Financial Wellness. Right. There's those three components of the financial coaching that I offer. The first one you mentioned is my budgeting course. I call it the Virtual Budget Coaching Course because it's, uh, it's a series of videos that teach people how to create a budget And it's not really creating a budget as much as it is they go through a process. They go through a process of realization. And the realization, it may be a little painful that we can't do everything we want to with our money, but it also puts a big highlighter on what is most important to us. That course is available. And then I've got the one-on-one coaching. And then I also teach financial wellness to employees of a workplace or might speak to an organization as well. And so there's a couple of those offerings there in the financial coaching that I do. You also have a podcast. And another quote from Twitter was, 63% of wealthy listen to audiobooks or podcasts during the commute to work versus 5% for poor people. So do you like to tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. There's a guy. His name is Tom Corley. He's an author of a book called Rich Habits. Oh. And it's it's... It's more of a story, but the story is based on statistics. He had studied over 200 wealthy people, self-made millionaires, and over 150 poor people, and basically asked them all the same questions. And he can compare the behaviors, that the habits of these people, and the differences are just black and white. It's amazing. So you can see from that quote that you just read, about 63% of wealthy people listen to audiobooks or, or, you know, they're not listening to the radio, basically. They're, right. If they're commuting, they're feeding their brain by reading or listening to audiobooks or podcasts rather than, you know, flipping through a magazine or listening to music. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but right. they're spending more of their time developing their brain, which they can then use that information, that knowledge, just like if you, if you took more school. And so the rich habits is something that I've incorporated into my podcast no debt, no credit, no problems. The podcast has three sections in it. One, we get into, a, a, I do an interview with somebody on a financial product or service or just a topic. Then I talk with a guy out here in St. Louis. His name is Andy Magnus, and he's been doing taxes for decades, and he used to be an IRS agent. But then the final segment is that rich habits segment, and that's where those statistics come in handy because then you can say, 
if you want to be rich, start doing rich people things. Mm-hmm. We all have poor habits, but we can <laughs> change that. Yes. And when we highlight what those poor habits are, we realize what they are, then we're able to make some changes. And that's what I've been doing with the podcast as well as doing some of those challenges to myself as well. Well, Steve, how do you address your audience to get them to listen to your podcast? How do I address them or how do I find them? Find them. (laughs) Well, I'm hoping to make something that's compelling enough that the people who are listening will tell their friends. Okay. And, uh, you know, so that that's one way. There's always social media and stuff like that. Uh, getting out and speaking is one thing. I just, uh, this, this weekend, uh, spoke at WordCamp Dayton. Yes, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, for the listeners who don't know what WordCamp is, uh, WordCamp is put on by people who love WordPress, which is kind of the engine that fuels people's web pages. Uh, if you want to build a website, you have options on what you can use to start and design from, and WordPress is one of those that people just love. And I've learned to love it as well. So there's these word camps all over the United States, and I went and spoke there. And that's one way that you can find more people who will listen to your podcast, become clients, or just, you know, networking in general is always good in in helping get your word out and find out more about them and their services because you never know when you bump into somebody who might just be a person who serves you in something that you need help with. So that's, that's one way that I do it. I think it would be really awesome to be able to hear one of your presentations like that. So do you ever come out west? <laughs> I can if you know where to go. <laughs> if there's a word camp that I can get in and I'll speak and another I'll be actually be in San Diego for the financial blogger conference coming up. It's called FinCon. Oh. It's gonna be coming up in September. Um I'm hoping that my presentation is accepted there, but I was spoke at the conference uh for them last year and uh it was about podcasting stuff really. So how are you making your business a success? How do you just keep pursuing all of these things that look good to you? And how do you pick the ones that are the right ones? Oh, every single day, it's just a challenge. You just can't quit. That's the thing. There's, there's never been a huge success in my world, not a big one. It's always been these incremental successes, very small ones. And that's what's telling me that I'm on the right direction, in the right direction, the way that my wife and I paid off all our debt, including our house, we paid off our house in December. Wow, is, congratulations. Yeah, it's just that we didn't quit. We just kept going. You know, we saved up to pay cash for things, including we replaced all the windows in our house last year. Oh, we my. Pay cash for all our vacations. We pay cash for, you know, and when I say cash, I mean, you know, it could be check or debit as well. Oh, sure. It's not credit card. It's not taking out a loan. And that helps us to stay out of debt, which then allows us to use the money that we do have towards whatever goals we have. And eventually that was paying off the house early. And now we have no debt. I don't have to worry about my credit. So no credit, no problems. Mm -hmm. And so now that your house is paid off and you have that amount of money, and then you know then where to invest it because of the classes that you've taught. Well, really the things that I do are not necessarily based on investing strategies. Yes, there's going to be discussions about investing, but it's really more about education. So even even my wife and I, we have a financial advisor. Uh, What I do is financial coaching. I don't do financial advising because that's somebody who has to be registered, licensed. They're broker dealers, things like that. I want to educate people to be able to make up their their decisions to know what they're getting into before they sign the dotted line because that's where a lot of debt problems comes from. It's just people don't realizing what it's costing them. So, you know, so what we do is we just throw more more money into savings and at our goals. Uh, My wife has a goal of going out to the uh, Napa Valley area this summer to celebrate a milestone in her life. And she's taken some friends with her. Oh my, how fun. Yeah, it's not cheap. And it's something that she really wants to do. So guess what? We have another goal. We don't have a mortgage payment. So guess where that's going? It's going into the savings for that goal. And that has to be so rewarding to be able to accomplish that. And it's not easy. Mm -mm. It takes a lot of sacrifice and staying on top of where you are spending your money, doesn't it? Yep, every single week. And it also takes the discipline not to be influenced by by, uh, people that are trying to sell you things. That's where you have to have that goal. Right. Because when you have that goal, the budget and the goal will keep you from going into debt. The budget will tell you how much you have to spend and you've already allocated where it's going to go. And spending 
can also include saving, you know, spending on my savings account, which means sure. that money goes into savings. And then the goal is saying, okay, if I have extra money, that goal is what? And it could be the savings. It could be, uh, you know, well, it's really savings. And in, in our life, it's almost always savings. Saving up for the next car, saving up for the trip, saving up for whatever, the big house repair. And that keeps us focused so that we don't suddenly have to go out and take out a loan to go on vacation because we've been saving for our vacation. Or, you know, vacation is a goal. It's not a surprise. It's not an emergency. So mm-hmm. why, don't, why don't we have the money for vacations? We should be saving up for it. And I know there's a lot of people, I work with them all the time, who aren't in that position yet to be able to pay off their debt and to be able to pay cash for these things. That's where the coaching helps them to understand that they can do it and shows them the, the things that they actually can put into place so that they will get to do it usually within two years. They, we can get most people out of debt, uh, consumer debt, in two years. That's a pretty significant accomplishment, isn't it? Yeah, and, and most people don't realize they can do it. They just don't mm-hmm. have the hope, and nobody's telling them how, or showing them how to do it, and I can do that. Right. Well, that's a very awesome task that you've undertaken there. And so would you tell us one thing else that's really exciting you in your business right now? Well, it's a side hustle. Uh, the kids are calling them side hustles. I call them extra jobs. But <laughs> it's the side hustle business, which uh, we were talking about podcasting earlier, and I just, I just love the medium of podcasts. Yes. I know you do too, because guess what? You're doing a podcast, so you must love it. I do. It's a pain in the butt, but it's fun. And one thing that I've found is there there are people out there who want to have a podcast, but they don't want to go through all the pain of podcasting. Right. They want to record, they want to find the guests, they want to market it, they want to promote it. And I'm totally on board with that, but they don't want to do the hard work of polishing <laughs> that episode to make it sound really good and especially make your guests sound good. Uh, if, if you've noticed, I've stuttered a couple times. And if you haven't noticed, that means I went and done the editing for Charlotte. And <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take out my almanaz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I've been doing some side hustles and getting some people off the ground so that they've been able to get their voice heard in their own shows. I have a course on how to teach people to use Audacity re- to record and edit better. I help people one-on-one with their podcast, so that's a side hustle that's really starting to take off in helping people get their voice heard, getting their shows out there. And I meant to mention earlier that that was how I met you, because I do use Audacity to edit my podcast, and then I found your site, and you said that you um, could help me with that, and the techniques that you showed me were so fantastic, and they really have helped with my editing. It hasn't really shortened the time yet. I still <laughs> take too long, but I need to just keep working at it. But it's really a wonderful course that you teach people. Well, thanks. I'm going to be adding another video to it here on how to create your own shortcuts. Oh, good. That will help you because, you know, I think everybody can really, they can understand, you know, when you do control C, they're right. copying, right? Right. Well, there's some things you can do to change your keyboard shortcuts that will allow you to just hit a letter or a number, and it Indeed. does the command for you right like that. And uh, it, it, I, I've changed my keyboard so much now that I don't even know what the original shortcuts are in Audacity. <laughs> I just know that D is delete, F is fade, S is to silence, X is for auto duck, it, you know, there's all, R is for repeat. It just makes it a little bit easier, so I'll have to make sure that I let you know when that when that video is up. Yes, yes, please do. And that's awesome to have those kind of shortcuts. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, Steve, what is the vision of the future of your business? It really is not about money, even though the show is about money, even though my coaching is about money, everything right. I talk about is about money, mm-hmm. but it really is about helping people. You are the first, believe this or not, I'm going to say it out loud, you're the first media outlet to know or to be able to broadcast the fact that I am writing a book. <gasps> oh my goodness. I'm Wonderful. finally doing it. I've been talking about it for years. I, I've always said I'm not going to do it just because I know myself very well. I try, but I just never will. But uh, I spoke at a men's conference about a month and a half ago where Mike Matheny, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, was a keynote speaker. So I'm like, yeah, that's really cool. Oh, wow. I designed this speech just for that day, and it's suddenly realized, I came to the realization that that's it. That's, that's my book. That's what my book needs to be based on. It's going to be very Christian-based, mm-hmm. and it's going to be very scriptural-based. Okay. And I think that's something that we could use more of. Is I do, too. Yeah, scriptural-based money management ideas, 
how we handle our money, how, what we believe in our money. And so that book's going to be coming out. Uh, I'm going to have the first draft finished in April of 2016. Wow. Good and it's going to be in the hands of those who are going to give me feedback. And that's, that's my goal right now is, is the deadline there. So that's, that's the thing is, is get the book written. And that's going to be just one more thing that obviously I can, I can add to my business. But yes, the goal is, of course, it's got to help people. That's, that's the bottom line. It's got to help people. Oh, I was just going to ask you next about your personal habits that <laughs> contribute to your success. And you have to have a pretty strong habit that's going to allow you to write this book. Do you have something special that you can share with us? Yeah, there's, let me see if I can remember all three. As you were asking me the question, I thought of three habits I've got that help me stay focused. And one, the biggest one is Google Calendar. Uh huh. It really is. I put everything in Google Calendar. I schedule, even, even laundry, I put laundry on there. Because if, if it's on my calendar, it's going to get done. Okay. And since it ties to my iPhone, you know, I get alerts to remind me this is coming up, interviews coming up, whatever. And so the Google Calendar is one step. The other one is, as you asked about for writing the book, I know what times I'm able to sit and actually write without being disturbed. And actually, there's like two one-hour sets of time during the week in this month that I'll be doing that to make sure that I get this thing, at least the first draft, uh, up and running. And the third was, uh, you said habits. Let's see. Habits. Habits versus Google Calendar. Make sure that I put it on there so it gets done. Second is is making sure that some of those blocks of time are dedicated to writing the book. And the third is, oh, I know what it was. Okay. Get up at five o'clock every day. Okay. Yes. And is that the best time of the day for you to write? No, it's just, it's how I get my day started. Because if okay. I, if I slept in too long, you know, the sun's already up. Okay. Well, you know, we got to get moving. Right. If I get up at five, I can start to do things that can then get the rest of my projects either ready to go or started for the day. Okay. Yes. A very good habit. And one that I am trying to develop to getting up that early, but it means going to bed earlier, doesn't it? Yeah, and it that's, does. That's another habit that needs to be enforced. Well, I don't seem to have a problem falling asleep early, so. <laughs> good. Well, that's good. No, it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask you to share something that helps with your efficiency, like Evernote, but Probably Google Calendar. It really is Google Calendar. Okay. Google Calendar and Dropbox. And oh, wow. and I'm beginning. Well, this this isn't really a tool that I chose. It's something that others have chose for me, but I am liking it. It's called Slack. Well, I keep hearing about that. Yeah. Would you tell us a little bit? Think of Slack as instant communication throughout your office, but it's not your office. It's the people that you're involved in a project with or... Oh. For instance, uh, I have a mastermind group. We've been meeting together for almost three years, and we have a, a we have a Slack chat line so that you know if somebody sends you know a message through there, we all get updated. It's kind of an instant communication, like email, but it's it's a little more instant. It's it's compartmentalized too because it's all in one place. Mm-hmm. And email, everybody can send me something to, where this Slack chat is dedicated just to these guys. So that might be an, a nice way to, to describe it. Yes, that does sound like a good a good plan then to use Slack. Okay, and it's thank free. you for that. And it's free. <laughs> and they have an app, so it's on my phone, it's on my desktop. Oh, wow. All sorts of benefits by using <laughs> it. Well, Steve, would you describe for us who are perfect referrals for your business? And by that, I mean business associates or clients that the listeners know that would benefit from doing business with you? I would say it's the young couple with two kids who are just, they're just unorganized in their finances. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you, there's a good majority of people like that because life happens and we all mm-hmm. start to jump towards the fire that we need to put out. They're the ones that I think I can help the most because they will instantly be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. They'll be able to reorganize their finances, be able to make some really big strides in getting their debt paid off and be able to cash flow more of their life. And then they can start to design that life in that house of financial freedom that we were talking about earlier. Great. Thank you for that. Well, Steve, you have already told us that you're going to be writing a book. But until that comes out, would, do you have a book that you would recommend to our listeners? Yes. It's funny. <laughs> this just happened last night. Uh, there's an author that I've been wanting to get a hold of for a while, could never get a hold of her. And then I, I saw that she was active on Twitter last night. So I sent her a message. I'm like, hey, I want to interview you. Her name oh. is 
Linda Tirado, T-I-R-A-D-O. She wrote a book called Hand to Mouth. Huh. And I, I, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. I'll tell you what. Just sign up to listen to my podcast, No Debt, No Credit, No Problems. She's going to be an interviewee someday soon. Okay. Put her on my show because she has a story of living basically broke. She's always broke. And, and I, I'm not sure that she's actually broken out of that, but she's been the voice of the poor. Really? Through this book. And it helped me to get into the mindset of somebody who constantly lives paycheck to paycheck. Oh. Because I actually was never really there. Right. And some people think, oh, Steve, you're so out of touch. No, you, if you read this book, you'll see what I'm talking about. My goodness. I will watch for that podcast, yeah. that's for sure. So it's called Heart Hand to Mouth. Mm -hmm. By Linda oh. Torado. Excellent okay. book. And if you get the audiobook, she reads it herself, and she's got this wonderful sarcasm. <laughs> I just love that. Well, good. Well, that is a very good book for us to listen to. Thank you for that recommendation. Steve, I've truly enjoyed listening to your journey and the stories that you shared. And so would you please share one more time how we can get in touch with you and any other resources that you want us to have, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. Thanks, Charlotte. This has been a lot of fun. Good. Uh, I guess I just direct everyone towards home base. My home base is stevestuart.me. That's Steve, S-T-E-W-A-R-T dot M-E. I couldn't get the dot com because that guy's had it since 1997. He's not giving it up. <laughs> but that's where they'll be able to find my podcast, my courses. That's where they're going to be able to find out how to pay attention, not interest. I like that. You know, I like that dot me. I'm glad it was available because Steve Stewart's not exactly a rare name. It's yeah. fairly common. Yeah, great. All right. Well, listeners, you can hear everything that we've been chatting about today if you go to bizstoryshare.com, Steve Stewart. Thank you again, Steve. This was very enjoyable. Thanks, Charlotte. And I'll be checking you out on no debt, no credit, no problems. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Charlotte. Keep podcasting. I will. Thank you. Give the storyteller some love. Go to bizstoryshared.com, click on the iTunes button, and give a five-star review. Thanks.